Ugh. Okay, we'll take it in on the chin here. So we're gonna use our extra roll maneuverability and hopefully cause this Kai to overshoot us. That's how it's done. Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akira Shin. By request, I am featuring this video, the Kirishu J7W3 Tier 10 Japanese Multi-Role Fighter. It is characterized as having powerful, large caliber armaments, effective against aircraft with high survivability, excellent cannons. It has four 30 millimeter cannons, each of which do 300 damage per second with a rate of fire of 200 rounds per minute and an effective firing range of 640 meters. Now, the firing range is a bit short for this tier, but, uh, but the cannons themselves are, are quite effective. It is a fighter, multi-role fighter, so it has low survivability, vulnerable engine, and it is said to often catch fire. High airspeed and a good boost. It's got a 12 second boost. Good maneuverability and horizontal turns. And is said to be effective in low altitude combat and in destroying small amounts of ground targets. You know, the, uh, the bombs are not that great. You only have two of them. They do 4,400 damage within a 75 meter radius. So good, good radius there for multi-role bombs but uh, not very powerful I usually just drop them on a single target both of them on a single target oftentimes it's just a uh, anti-aircraft position so don't count on those to be stellar but uh, better than none I guess no rockets on this aircraft its maximum optimal altitude is 1600 meters its service ceiling is 3600 meters and it does okay uh, at, at the higher altitudes, but uh, you got to be very careful that you don't get caught up there. I wouldn't stay up there very long because you end up being a sitting duck. Rate of climb is 146 meters per second. Haven't had too much uh, difficulty in stalling. Stall speed on this aircraft is 120 kilometers per hour. So, you know, about middle of the road stall speed. I would say it hasn't stalled even once in the time I've been playing with it. Now, one of the best things about this aircraft, and I think its primary defensive measure, is its ability to roll. The rate of roll on this aircraft is 128 degrees per second. By way of comparison, one of the excellent rolling aircraft is the FW-190A8R2. Its rate of roll is 160 degrees per second. That's without all of the uh, equipment slotted. So that just gives you a little bit of a comparison there to the rate of roll on the J7W3. Ugh. And we'll take it in on the chin here. So we're going to use our extra roll maneuverability and hopefully cause this Kai to overshoot us. You cannot leave it like that. 
that's how it's done. But With our equipment choices, I've been able to get the rate of turn at for 360 degrees at 9.7 seconds, which is not too bad for a multi-role fighter. Its cruising speed is 480 kilometers per hour. Boost speed is up to 857 kilometers per hour. And again, it's got that 12 second boost. 950 kilometers per hour for the maximum dive speed. 8,800 cumulative damage for the two bombs that we have. The resupply time is 120 seconds. So, wow, two minutes. It uh, takes a while to get those two bombs back. So they're just not a huge factor with this aircraft. 1,200 damage per second is the cumulative damage for the forward firing offensive weapons. As you know, I like to feature aircraft at the specialist level so that you can see all of the uh, equipment available. And I do have the J7W3 at specialist level for you. For the site, I went with advanced gyroscopic site, which, you know, honestly, that's what I choose for every aircraft I have just about. Uh, and it has plus 11% accuracy of forward firing offensive armament. Bonus characteristics, a plus 5% chance of inflicting critical damage, plus 5% accuracy when firing at moving targets. That, of course, really comes in handy. The negative is minus 7% pilot's resistance to injuries. However, I have slotted, as I do with all my aircraft, emergency medical kits. So if our pilot is injured, we can get him back up to health quickly. Your other choices would have been cockpit armor which would have increased cruise resistance to injuries, but you would have lost aircraft maneuverability. And this, I have went with a maneuverability build for this aircraft, so I don't want to lose any maneuverability. I think it's critical. And something you don't see very often on this aircraft, you can slot navigational radio equipment, which increases visibility so you can see enemy aircraft sooner and decreases the range at which the aircraft is detected by enemy aircraft. The negative being pilot's resistance to injuries. But clearly, I, you know, the site is the best way to go. For the airframe, I went with advanced lightweight wing frame, which increases roll maneuverability by 8.5% and maneuverability in turns by 2.4%. Bonus characteristics, a plus 3% roll maneuverability, plus 2% aircraft hit points. Negatives being minus 4.2% aircraft hit points, minus 7% wings resistance to critical damage. However, I went with advanced reinforced skin, which increases by 19% tails resistance to critical damage, and by 19% wings resistance to critical damage. So that uh, certainly offsets that negative that we got on advanced lightweight ring wing frame. Bonus characteristics, plus 5% tails resistance to critical damage, plus 5% tolerance to damage from AA guns. We are a low altitude aircraft, so we do uh, take a pounding sometimes from any aircraft, so it's nice to have that. Negative is minus 2.6% cruise speed, minus 2.6% maximum speed with boost activated. Other choices would have been Reinforced airframe, which would have increased our aircraft's hit points, but at the cost of maneuverability. And as I said, this is a maneuverability build that I don't want to take away its agility at all. Polished skin, which would have increased aircraft speed, but again at the cost of aircraft maneuverability. For the engine, I went with advanced lightweight power unit. And we don't care about yaw maneuverability because we don't really use that. But it does have a plus 2.6% maneuverability in turns, which we do care about. Bonus characteristics, a plus 1% acceleration with boost, plus 0.5% cruise speed. The negative is minus 12% engine's resistance to critical damage. Now, to try to address that issue, we, I did slot emergency engine restart system so that if our engine does get damaged, we can get it back up to speed. If this had a second engine slot, 
I certainly would have gone with emergency engine cooling, which uh, improves the engine cooldown rate by five times for 10 seconds, but this particular aircraft does not have that second spot. Your other options for the engine would have been engine armor protection, which would have increased the engine's resistance to damage, but at the cost of aircraft speed. Combined injection boost system, which would have increased boost efficiency, but at the cost of boost availability. And finally, uprated engine, which would have increased engine thrust, but would have increased the chance of fire. But again, this is a maneuverability build, so I did go with lightweight power unit. For the forward firing weapons, I went with improved reinforced bolt carriers, which increases burst length by 7.9%. For a forward firing offensive armament, bonus characteristic of plus 5% cooldown rate of forward firing offensive armament, the negative minus 5.7% accuracy of forward firing offensive armament. I think this uh, particular piece of equipment is a must for this aircraft. These, these cannons do overheat quickly, so it's nice to delay that. But your other options would have been long gun barrels, which would have increased the range of fire. And, you know, on this particular aircraft, that's tempting because I do think it suffers a little bit in range of fire. But we would have lost burst length. And given the fact that these cannons overheat so easily, I just didn't want to go with that. A gas-operated action, which would have increased rate of fire, but at the cost of accuracy. All right, consumables we haven't talked about. I did slot, as I do all my aircraft, secondary control system, which restores controllability of wings and tail. If we get that critical damage to either of those. And CO2 inerting system, which reduces the chance of fire by 30% and is effective for the entire course of the battle. So it's not something you have to activate it, it's just always there. Now, I had a choice here between that and backup pneumatic control assist, which would have increased maneuverability in all axes for 10 seconds. I was very tempted to choose that skill um, because you do get sometimes in these close-in dogfights where some extra maneuverability really would be useful. And if you chose that, uh, the pneumatic control assist, I think that would be a perfectly fine choice. Uh, but 10 seconds is not a very long time. And so uh, versus having reduced fire for the entire course of the battle, I, it just, uh, I thought that was the better choice. And, and our aircraft is said to be uh, vulnerable to fire, often catching fire. So that's why I made that choice. But you'd be, you know, you'd be fine if you, if you chose the other option. For forward firing weapons, I did go with fragmentation ammunition, which is the maximum chance of inflicting critical damage recommended for auto cannons. Uh, you could go with universal ammunition, which increases chance of fire and critical damage. But I really, you know, we only have cannons on this aircraft. We don't have any machine guns. So I think getting the critical hit is more important than having a higher chance of causing fire. So that's why I went with the fragmentation ammunition. For pilot skills, I went with... Marksman 1 and Marksman 2, collectively, those reduce dispersion of forward firing weapons by 10%. And in the case of Marksman 2, it also increases accuracy of firing at actively maneuvering targets by 10%. I think these two skills are a must on this aircraft. You might be tempted to go with Engine Guru 1 and Engine Guru 2, but... I think it's more important to have the accuracy. Because this is a, is a maneuverability build, I did go with Aerodynamics Expert, which increases the positive effects of mounted equipment on aircraft maneuverability by 40%. So all those choices we made, increases increasing maneuverability of the aircraft, this is going to augment those effects by 40%. So good synergy there with our chosen uh, pilot skills and our equipment. 
also went with fire resistance, which reduces fire duration and damage by 20%. Again, addressing any issues regarding fire. Uh, you could have gone with firefighter, which extinguishes fire by active maneuvering, but I'd rather have the decreased damage just because it's always there and I don't have to get off my target to do this maneuvering to stop the fire. If I had an extra skill point, I would have abandoned the fire resistance skill and gone with aerobatics expert instead to increase maneuverability in all axes by 2%. Paint schemes. So the paint schemes on this aircraft are a little lackluster. If you look at the uh, J7W2, it's got some really nice paint schemes. Desert is particularly nice. But, uh, but the J7W3, its paint schemes are not quite as good. Unfortunately, uh, this is Marine Desert Winter and Summer. So, yeah, a little boring, which is a bit disappointing. You want your level 10, your tier 10 aircraft to have the best, but uh, not so with the paint schemes for this aircraft. All right, so that is my build for the J7W3. Let's head into battle now and see how it actually performs. So here we go in the J7W3. We will be fighting over the Northern Bridgehead Valhalla Theater of Operation. And we will head first to the military base to the west here. to run into our ground attack aircraft there. So this is a low altitude aircraft. Come in here and we will drop our bombs on this target right here. Hopefully that will take it out. We've got a ground attack aircraft coming in. So we're going to focus on hopefully taking it out and denying the enemy this uh, military base. Is under our control. Military yes, base. We can get a couple shots off before it zooms out. Alright, so we almost have the airfield. Head over to this garrison. And I'm going to be watching for that heavy fighter because it is around here somewhere. There it is. Need to be watchful of it. 60 seconds still left before our bombs are back up. Let's see what do we have over here? Ground attack aircraft. Enemy bombers inbound. Don't let them reach their target. to take this one target out here. There we go. Uh, 
let's see. Multi-roll. Let's see, I don't know if we can get up there to it though. And I'm worried we're gonna expose ourselves here. Let's see if we can take this air defense aircraft out. Come on. go and we have our bombs so let's see if we can oh now we can save them what do we have over here fighter no multi-roll f84f There we go. All right. Let's see. Got a bomber and a ground attack aircraft over at our military base, so we need to protect that. So we will head over there. We did have a ground attack aircraft. Do we still? Or did it get destroyed? There it is. It's coming in now. And we will take it out. Whew. I was worried we were going to run into it there for a second. The ground attack aircraft coming in. Let's see if we can keep our distance this time. Make it a little easier for us. Air there we go. All right. Got some a couple aircraft working on our garrison that we captured over here and then there's a ground attack aircraft coming in there an IL-40 to uh, also work on that garrison so let's see if we can save it come on zoom in here to make our shots count Cannons are nice. Another multi roll trying to get our aircraft up there. We're a little bit out of our element. On a high for this aircraft. Bombers coming in, so we'll s do what we can here. I don't know where the right aircraft for this, but we're it. Well, you know, if we were gonna go, that was the time to do it before the squall line hit. So. Ooh, it's like they turned the uh, airfield there, but we still pulled it out quite uh, convincingly. All right, so number one spot on the team, two chevrons on the grade rank, subjugator, hunt for stormbird, effective fire, and flying start. Back to the hangar and check out the after action report. So 105,127 in currency. 5,317 in experience points, 265 in free experience points. 
10 kills, 1 assist, 2 sectors captured, 5 aircraft were shot down uh, while defending, so that was key. Uh, getting those uh, ground attack aircraft, which can do a lot of damage in a short period of time, was, I think, critical. Uh, took out two ground targets for 8,794. We were destroyed only once. And we did that in 6 minutes 51 seconds of battle duration. 10,865 in personal points. So there you have it, folks. The J7W3. Put it back here. Put it on desert, which I like. Excellent aircraft, excellent guns. Very, very good in uh, roll. I think that is probably your primary defensive measure is uh, using its roll capability to stay out of enemy fire and outmaneuver the enemy aircraft. And I hope you have really enjoyed this video. If you get the J7W3 and to specialist level even, I hope you have great success in it.